talking today about a project called, and a paper called The Integral Lens, Exploring a Multi-Perspectival Approach to Architectural Photography. But what we want to start with is four classic examples of very famous images uh, from architectural photography lens. This is Walker Evans from 1936. He's uh, well known as a documentary style photographer and it represents a very objective view. He uses l very little um, intervention between the object and the subject. So it's a third person view of the built environment and he intentionally takes as much as possible the architecture's point of view out of the frame. This is Edward Steichen's view of the Flatiron Building in what was known as the Pictorialist Movement in the early 20th century. And he presents a perspective in which reality is less important than the impression. So it's a first person, highly subjective view of this streetscape and this famous building. Uh, so the photographer's intention here is to convey his own sense of the aesthetic experience. So it moves it into the realm of fine art. This is Charles Sheeler in one of the most uh, widely published images probably of all time that's architectural. This is of the Ford plant um, in, in Michigan. And here he's moving into kind of a, into a symbolic uh, imagery. So he's enrolling someone in a cultural story. In this case, it's the myth of the machine. It's the power and the heroics of American industry. Um, and so it's taking you know, a second person view. This is Bill Hedrick, and this is Frank Lloyd Wright's Falling Water uh, House, and it's actually called the Edgar Kaufman House, built in 1936, photo taken in 1937. This is photography that's intended to make the best presentation of the architect's work, to be published, to become famous, to be you know, put out there for mass consumption. So it's a kind of commercial architectural photography that's driven by the situation, driven by the context of its production and its economics. So basically, what I've just described is the four quadrants, seen through imagery of buildings. And so Pygmalion developed, uh, for the first time, a kind of view of thinking about uh, architectural photography in the four quadrants. So in the upper left, he called that the photographic eye. And that's where we're concerned with things about, like the self-expression of the, the photographer themselves, maybe the state of mind that's coming through, the inner voices, aesthetics, and so forth. In the upper right, he called that the photographic frame. That's where we're looking at the object itself, the photograph. And all, we're also thinking about the equipment, the technology, um, and observable things that we can see. In the lower left, he calls that the photographic view. And there, we're looking at the cultural symbols, the communications, the stories that something is telling, the concepts, theories, and ideas. And then fourthly, the photographic practice in the lower right, the whole context, the socioeconomic context of production, uh, exhibitions, displays, how things get out there into the world, and so forth.
now we'll move from quadrants to levels. I said that we'd see the same uh, photograph again. This is the same as Steichen's building here. Um, and this is Bernice Abbott and what we might call the early realists. So these were photographers that were prioritizing a kind of rigorous observation, a mastery of technique and composition. They were systematically going around and taking photographs of what they saw. This is a traditional level, pre-modern approach to vision. This is a classic image by a famous architectural photographer from the modern era, Ezra Stoller. It's his image of the TWA terminal by Arab Sarin, a famous Finnish architect who came to America. And the modern begins to differentiate the image and what it represents. It introduces the personal perspective of the photographer. So it's representing the building objectively, and so it's like, you know, it's still got that traditional level of realism, but now it's adding this experience of the space. So the, the modern architect starts to think not just about the stuff of the walls, but the space in between is a real thing that you can design and manipulate. Now at the postmodern level, one of the defining characteristics is that postmodernists are interested in something called context, which I never even heard about in school, but I got to learn about it. And in this sense, we understand anything by placing it into a larger system, into its larger context, rather than analyzing and breaking it down. So architects began to put their buildings into context. And so here in this uh, image by Alan Karchmer, you know, you're not quite sure what building he's photographed, right? And so it's the shift from architecture as space to architecture as context. This is one that we place into our new integral uh, thinking or integral level uh, about architectural photography. It's Iwan Ban. It's called the Mokoko Floating School. It's kind of engaged commentary on how people live, their survival strategies, their relationships between people, the social environment, and the built environment, and in this case also the natural environment. He takes an aerial perspective, so it kind of gives you that sort of holistic overview feeling. And at the integral level, we began to get interested in things like multiple perspectives, architecture as setting for life, the dynamic flows and interactions with natural and social processes. Types are really critical for understanding architectural photography. So we have three types here, the topographic or documentary we call it, the editorial or commercial type, and the expressive or fine art type. Now these are three views by three different photographers of the same building. This is the National Stadium in Beijing, China. So uh, Bon on the left takes a kind of photojournalistic approach. I mean, the building kind of fades away, but he's just focusing on the construction workers and the social life around the building and so forth. So it's anthropological. Griffith, in the middle, is an example of 
someone who's taking the perspective of the architect and the firm and trying to think about how that image is going to be projected into the world. And then on the right, Irene Kung takes a more artistic approach. So she takes the building out of its world, creates a new sky, creates a new ground, and you can imagine this now being in a, in a public gallery. Perhaps. So when we take the integral and intersect it with documentary, one of the kind of groups of photographers that we kind of, we kind of put, put these guys into different realms, we call these the reconstructionists. And so this is an image from Jurgis. Uh, and so he's taking a picture of this famous, amazing cultural center designed by Renzo Piano. It's in Athens. And what he does is he gets on top of the construction crane, 100 meters up. And for six years, he's photographing, looking straight down, what we call orthographic view. And so it's both objective about the construction process, and as you can see, I mean, did you know that was a building? Right? It's also a kind of abstract composition. So he's using this thing of point of view. He's flattening everything out, which is kind of what the traditional does. It just looks at stuff right, without too much interface and commentary. And at the same time, he's kind of t pulling out all the artistic thrills or frills and taking what we call a topographic view, which is more of a postmodern characteristic. He did a whole series of these and became a very successful um, exhibition. And he's doing different quadrants also, representing um, the institution's brand and also taking his own view on a cultural interpretation of a significant project.